Number 15. The Hook Island Sea Monster In December 1964, a mysterious and unnerving photograph emerged from the tranquil waters of Stonehaven Bay near Hook Island, Queensland, Australia. This image, capturing what appeared to be an enormous tadpole-like sea monster, quickly captivated the world. The photograph, taken by Robert Lesarec, showed a massive, dark, elongated creature with a gaping mouth, estimated to be around 80 feet long. The creature's eerie appearance and the strange circumstances of its discovery made the Hook Island sea monster one of the most enduring mysteries in the realm of cryptozoology. Robert Lesarec was exploring the waters around Hook Island alongside his wife and his friend Henk de Jean when they first spotted the creature. According to Lesarec's account, they notice a strange object lying on the seabed, partially obscured by the shallow water. As they approached, they realized it was a gigantic, tadpole-like creature. The group managed to take several photographs before the creature supposedly moved and swam away. These images show a dark, serpentine figure with a gaping round mouth and what appear to be eyes on the top of its head. The photographs quickly garnered international attention, sparking a wave of theories and speculation. One of the most popular theories among cryptozoologists was that the creature was an unknown species of giant eel, or a prehistoric marine animal, such as a plesiosaur or a zooglodon. The distinct serpentine shape and the massive size of the creature seemed to support the idea that it was a yet-to-be-discovered marine species lurking in the depths of the ocean. However, skeptics soon began to question the authenticity of the photographs and the accompanying story. Some suggested that the entire incident was a hoax orchestrated by Lesarec. They pointed to inconsistencies in the accounts provided by the three witnesses, and noted that Lesarec had a history of financial troubles, which might have motivated him to fabricate a sensational story for monetary gain. Additionally, some experts who examined the photographs argued that the creature appeared too static and suggested it might have been a cleverly constructed model or even a piece of debris, such as a large plastic sheet or a deflated air mattress, manipulated to resemble a sea monster. Another compelling theory posits that the Hook Island sea monster was a case of pareidolia, a psychological phenomenon where the human brain perceives familiar patterns, such as faces or animals, in random stimuli. According to this theory, the combination of underwater shadows, plant life, and the natural topography of the seabed could have created an illusion that appeared to be a monstrous creature. This explanation aligns with the idea that the human mind is predisposed to recognize and interpret shapes in ambiguous visual information, particularly in environments like the ocean, where light and shadow can play deceptive tricks. Despite the skepticism, the Hook Island sea monster continues to intrigue enthusiasts and researchers, many of whom remain baffled by the photographs. The compelling nature of the pictures, combined with the dramatic account provided by Lesarec, ensures that the mystery remains a topic of interest in cryptozoological circles. The lack of definitive evidence or a proven alternative explanation leaves room for continued debate and speculation about what might have been lurking beneath the waters of Stonehaven Bay that day. In the years since the incident, various expeditions and investigations have been launched to explore the waters around Hook Island but no conclusive evidence has been found to either support or refute the existence of the sea monster. The region remains a popular destination for divers and marine biologists, drawn by the possibility of encountering something extraordinary. Number 14. The Time-Traveling Scientist An ordinary day in Russia took an extraordinary turn when a dash cam captured footage that has since sparked a whirlwind of speculation and intrigue. The video, widely circulated on the internet, shows a scene of typical traffic that abruptly becomes anything but typical. As vehicles drive along the rural road, a semi-trailer suddenly swerves, nearly colliding with oncoming traffic. The abrupt maneuver raises immediate questions about the cause. Initially, it seems like an inexplicable swerve until the camera reveals the reason. A man, dressed in what appears to be a lab coat, seemingly materializes out of nowhere in the truck's path. The man's appearance is so sudden and unexpected that it lends itself to numerous theories, one of the most captivating being that he might be a scientist from the future who miscalculated a time travel teleportation. 
The footage shows the man narrowly avoiding a fatal accident. What adds to the mystery is his reaction, or rather, the lack thereof. The man displays an unnerving calmness, almost robotic in nature. After the near miss, he turns, places his hands in the pockets of his lab coat, and nonchalantly walks down the road. This eerie calm has only fueled further speculation about his origins and the true nature of the incident. Several viewers have analyzed the footage closely. Some argue that upon close inspection, you can see the man crossing the road in front of the truck before the incident, suggesting he was there all along. However, what remains difficult to explain is his composed demeanor following such a close encounter with death. The empty fields on either side of the road also beg the question, why was he crossing there in the first place? Theories abound. Some believe the man might be involved in an experiment gone wrong, suggesting that his lab coat might signify his role in a scientific endeavor. Others are certain of the time travel theory, believing he could have accidentally appeared at the wrong place and in the wrong time. The notion of time travel, while fantastical, has found some traction among those who point to the man's odd behavior and attire as evidence of something out of the ordinary. Skeptics, however, argue for more mundane explanations. They suggest the man might simply be a local resident whose presence on the road was coincidental, and his calm reaction could be attributed to shock or disorientation, rather than anything otherworldly. Various theories. The video remains one of the most mysterious things captured on camera. The man's sudden appearance, coupled with his calm and collected reaction, has left many pondering the possibilities. Could this be a genuine case of time travel? Or is there a simpler explanation that has yet to be uncovered? The footage continues to fascinate and baffle, inviting viewers to draw their own conclusions about this mysterious event. Number 13. The Patterson-Gimlin Film The Patterson-Gimlin Bigfoot footage is a renowned film clip captured by Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin on October 20th, 1967. Riding on horseback along the banks of Bluff Creek in Northern California, Bob Gimlin and the late Roger Patterson, both hailing from Yakima County in Washington, claim to have found themselves at the center of an extraordinary encounter. During this remarkable experience, the elusive Bigfoot was captured on film, leaving an indelible impression on frame 352, now universally recognized as the iconic symbol for Sasquatch. What is truly astounding is that despite the advancements in film and costume technology over the past five decades, the authenticity of this footage has yet to be definitively debunked. It was Roger Patterson, who unfortunately passed away in 1972, that managed to document this extraordinary sight. In his recollection prior to his passing, Roger Patterson vividly remembered being a mere 25 feet away from the imposing figure of the Bigfoot when he first laid eyes on it. The horse he was riding reacted instinctively, rearing up into the air, clearly startled by the presence or scent of the unknown creature. Reacting swiftly, Patterson dismounted and retrieved his camera from his saddlebag, a process which took approximately 20 seconds. Urging Bob Gimlin to cover him, he sprinted towards the Bigfoot, aimed to capture a shot of the creature, which had been startled by the sudden movement of one of the horses. The story of the Patterson-Gimlin footage begins with Roger Patterson, a rodeo rider by profession, who developed a deep fascination with Sasquatch in 1961. Inspired by Ray Wallace, who claimed to have discovered Sasquatch tracks in the late 1950s, Patterson embarked on a mission to establish himself as a renowned Bigfoot researcher. Originally conceived as a docudrama centered around Sasquatch tracking, with flashback scenes featuring reenacted footage of the creature, Patterson enlisted the help of friends from Yakima, including Bob Gimlin, to bring his vision to life. Filming commenced in May and June of 1967, and they returned in October to gather additional footage. Little did they know that this particular expedition would forever etch their names into the history of cryptozoology. Equipped with a rented camera, Patterson ventured into the wilderness on that fateful Friday, October 20th, intending to create a fictional Bigfoot movie. However, to his astonishment, fate intervened, and he captured what is purported to be footage of an actual Sasquatch. Patterson wasted no time in promoting the film and capitalizing on its potential financial rewards. He struck multiple deals that brought him monetary gains and opportunities for interviews and lectures, 
elevating his status as the man credited with discovering Sasquatch. Sadly, Patterson's life was tragically cut short, and he did not live to fully enjoy the fruits of his labor. He succumbed to cancer in 1972, unwavering in his belief in the authenticity of the film until his final days. It is speculated that Patterson, aware of his terminal diagnosis and driven by the desire to provide for his ailing wife, found both the motivation to create the film and the resolve to never admit to any potential hoax. Bob Hieronymus, Patterson's neighbor, also made allegations that he was offered $1,000 to participate in a single day of filming for Roger's movie. The condition was that he would don a monkey suit, augmented with a football helmet and shoulder pads to create a bulkier appearance. Bob, who would later pass a polygraph test regarding these claims, stated that he traveled to California with the duo to film the iconic scene before returning to Yakima, where his mother and two brothers confirmed spotting the suit in the back of his car. Bob Gimlin, the surviving eyewitness to the encounter, whether genuine or part of the hoax, remained silent about the film for many years, citing his wife's aversion to publicity as the reason. However, this silence raises doubts about whether he was aware of the footage's fabrication. In the 1990s, he even acknowledged the possibility of the entire affair being a hoax, including the potential of being deceived himself. One of the primary theories is that the Patterson-Gimlin film captures an actual Bigfoot, a previously undiscovered primate species. Proponents of this theory argue that the creature's movements, musculature, and behavior are consistent with a living animal rather than a person in a costume. Aspects of the creature's anatomy, including the visible muscle movements and proportionate limbs, have been cited as evidence that the footage could not be easily replicated with the costume technology available in the 1960s. Some researchers have conducted detailed analyses of the film, claiming that the gait and physical characteristics of the figure are beyond human capabilities. Some skeptics suggest that the creature in the film could be a known animal, such as a bear, misidentified under unusual circumstances. They argue that bears can occasionally walk on their hind legs, and in certain lighting or from certain angles, a bear could appear humanoid. However, supporters of the Bigfoot theory counter that the figure's proportions and movements do not match those of a bear. There is also the possibility that Patterson and Gimlin were not complicit in a hoax, but were deceived themselves. This theory suggests that someone else could have staged the sighting to fool Patterson and Gimlin, who were already predisposed to believe in Bigfoot. The pair's genuine reactions and subsequent promotion of the film could be seen as evidence of their belief in what they captured, regardless of its authenticity. The Patterson-Gimlin footage, like Jim Mills' footage, has endured decades of scrutiny and analysis. With both inexplicable videos taking place within such a short distance of each other, it raises the question of whether the Marble Mountains and the surrounding areas could have once been home to the species. Could it be likely that these men stumbled across the same family of Sasquatch? The mysterious encounter captured by Patterson and Gimlin continues to intrigue and baffle, leaving the ultimate truth up to each viewer's interpretation. Number 12. The Hestalen Lights In the secluded valley of Hestalen, Norway, a mysterious phenomenon has been observed for decades, drawing the attention of scientists, researchers, and curious onlookers from around the world. Known as the Hestalen Lights, these unexplained luminous orbs have been captured on video numerous times, offering a tantalizing glimpse into one of the most intriguing mysteries of our time. The Hestalen lights have been reported since the early 1930s, but it was during the early 1980s that the phenomenon gained widespread attention. The lights appear as glowing orbs, varying in color from white to yellow and even red. They hover above the ground, move at varying speeds, and sometimes remain stationary for extended periods. The lights have been observed in different weather conditions and at various times of the year, adding to the complexity of understanding their origin. Numerous videos and photographs have documented the Hestalen lights, providing substantial evidence of their existence. One notable instance occurred in September 1984, when a team of scientists from the University of Oslo captured clear footage of the lights during a field investigation. The video shows a bright orb hovering above the valley, 
changing colors and moving erratically before vanishing into the night sky. This and other similar recordings have sparked a flurry of scientific interest and debate. Several theories have been proposed to explain the Hestalen lights, ranging from natural phenomena to more speculative ideas. One leading scientific theory suggests that the lights are a form of plasma. This theory posits that the lights are created by ionized gases in the atmosphere and become visible due to specific environmental conditions in the Hestalen Valley. Researchers have noted that the valley has a high concentration of scandium and other minerals that could contribute to the formation of plasma when combined with solar winds and other atmospheric conditions. Another hypothesis involves the piezoelectric effect, where stress on quartz crystals in the valley's bedrock can generate an electric charge. This electric discharge could ionize the air, creating the glowing orb seen in Hestalen. The unique geological makeup of the valley with its rich deposits of quartz and other minerals, supports this theory. Some researchers have suggested that the Hestalen lights are a form of ball lightning, a rare and poorly understood atmospheric electrical phenomenon. Ball lightning typically appears as a glowing spherical object, similar to the Hestalen lights. However, the frequency and duration of the Hestalen lights differ from typical ball lightning occurrences making this explanation less likely for all observed cases. Beyond scientific explanations, there are some paranormal and extraterrestrial theories about the Hestalen lights. Given the unusual nature of the lights, some have speculated that they could be of extraterrestrial origin. This theory suggests that the lights are evidence of alien spacecraft or technology. While intriguing, there is no concrete evidence to support this hypothesis and it remains within the realm of speculation. A related but distinct theory is that the Hestalen lights are a type of earthquake light, a phenomenon reported in seismic areas where lights are observed in the sky before, during, or after an earthquake. Although the Hestalen area is not particularly seismically active, some researchers propose that minor tectonic movements could generate the observed lights. The Hestalen lights continue to be the subject of ongoing research. The Hestalen Automatic Measurement Station, HAMS, was established in 1983 to monitor the lights and collect data on their occurrences. This station uses a variety of instruments, including cameras, magnetometers, and spectrometers, to analyze the lights and their characteristics. Despite decades of research, the Hestalen lights remain a mystery. They are one of the few phenomena with extensive video and photographic evidence, yet no definitive explanation. Scientists and enthusiasts alike continue to study the lights, hoping to one day unravel the secrets of this mysterious display in the Norwegian sky. Number 11. The Solway Firth Spaceman In the spring of 1964, a seemingly innocuous photograph taken at Solway Firth, Cumbria, would become one of the most talked about images of the mid-20th century. Jim Templeton, a local firefighter, captured a picture of his five-year-old daughter Elizabeth while they were enjoying a day out in the countryside. What should have been a simple family photo quickly turned into a mystery when the developed picture revealed a strange figure behind Elizabeth, which appeared to be a spaceman in a white suit and helmet. The image, which has become known as the Solway Firth Spaceman, shows Elizabeth smiling at the camera, while over her shoulder, a figure in what looks like a spacesuit stands in the background. Templeton, who insisted that there was no one else present at the time the photograph was taken, was baffled by the unexplained figure. The photo quickly garnered significant media attention, leading to widespread speculation and numerous theories attempting to explain the mysterious figure. One of the most prevalent theories suggested that the figure was indeed a spaceman, an extraterrestrial visitor accidentally caught on camera. This theory was fueled by the growing interest in space exploration and UFO sightings during the 1960s, a period marked by the space race and numerous reports of unidentified flying objects. Enthusiasts of the extraterrestrial explanation argued that the figure's appearance, with a helmet and suit resembling those worn by astronauts, was too specific to be mere coincidence. Skeptics, however, proposed more down-to-earth explanations. The most widely accepted theory posited that the spaceman was actually Templeton's wife, Annie, 
who had inadvertently walked into the shot. Annie was wearing a pale blue dress that day, which might have appeared white due to overexposure from the bright sunlight. Her position and the camera angle could have given the impression of a figure in a spacesuit, with the bright light obscuring her facial features and making her appear helmeted. Despite Templeton's firm assertion that his wife was not in the frame when he took the photo, this explanation remains the most plausible to many analysts. Another intriguing aspect of the Solway Firth Spaceman mystery is the subsequent visit Templeton received from two men who claimed to be government officials. According to Templeton, the men arrived at his home a few days after the photograph gained public attention. They introduced themselves as agents from a government agency, although they did not specify which one. Referring to each other only as number 9 and number 11, they were dressed in dark suits and exuded an air of authority and secrecy. The men asked Templeton to accompany them to the site where the photograph had been taken. Once there, they began questioning him in detail about the events of that day. They inquired about the weather conditions, the exact time the photograph was taken, and any unusual occurrences he might have noticed during the family's day out. Their questions were meticulous, and they seemed particularly interested in the possibility of any military activities in the area, though Templeton insisted he had seen nothing unusual apart from the mysterious figure in his photograph. After their thorough interrogation, the men abruptly ended the session. They did not provide any identification or offer any explanation for their visit, leaving Templeton with more questions than answers. As they departed, they warned him not to speak further about the encounter. The secrecy and the manner in which these men conducted themselves led many to speculate that they were part of the so-called Men in Black, a term popularized in UFO folklore to describe members of a mysterious agency who supposedly worked to suppress evidence of extraterrestrial encounters. In the years following the photograph, numerous experts and photo analysts have examined the image. While some have suggested the possibility of photographic anomalies or double exposure, the consensus largely supports the theory that the figure was a human subject, albeit unintentionally captured and with a visage altered by lighting conditions. Despite these investigations, the Solway Firth Spaceman mystery remains officially unsolved. The photograph continues to be a topic of fascination, with discussions ranging from paranormal forums to scientific communities. It has become an iconic image in the history of unexplained phenomena, and remains a hot topic for debate decades on. Number 10. City in the Clouds In October 2015, a series of astonishing videos emerged from Foshan, China, showing what appeared to be a sprawling, floating city in the clouds. The footage, which quickly went viral, depicted a surreal and ethereal cityscape suspended in the sky, complete with towering skyscrapers and intricate structures. This phenomenon captivated millions and led to intense debate and speculation about the origins and nature of the mysterious apparition. Witnesses described seeing a city-like formation that seemed to hover above the horizon, its structures looming eerily in the mist. The clarity and detail of the site left many in awe and prompted numerous theories ranging from the scientific to the fantastical. Some speculated that the vision was a window into a parallel universe, while others pondered the possibility of an elaborate hoax or even a secret government experiment. The most widely accepted scientific explanation for the phenomenon is that it was a type of mirage known as a Fata Morgana. Fata Morgana is a complex form of mirage that occurs because of atmospheric temperature inversions, where layers of air at different temperatures refract light in unusual ways. These conditions can cause distant objects, such as buildings or ships, to appear elevated and distorted, creating the illusion of floating objects. In this case, the specific weather conditions over Foshan likely led to the extraordinary visual effect observed by so many. Despite this scientific explanation, the event ignited a host of alternative theories. One popular idea suggested that the apparition was evidence of a parallel universe or an alternate dimension briefly intersecting with our own. Proponents of this theory argued that the level of detail and the distinct architectural features of the floating city 
could not be explained by a mere mirage. They posited that the vision was a glimpse into another world, a theory that captivated the imagination of many and added an element of science fiction to the discussion. Another theory floated by conspiracy theorists was that the phenomenon was the result of a secret government experiment involving holographic technology. Some speculated that the Chinese government, or even an international body, was testing advanced projection techniques, and the floating city was an unintended consequence or a deliberate demonstration of this technology. This theory, while intriguing, ultimately lacked concrete evidence and was largely dismissed by experts. Adding to the mystery, the floating city phenomenon was not an isolated incident. Similar sightings had been reported in other parts of the world, including a notable instance in 2011 over the Huangshan Mountains in China. These recurring events fueled ongoing speculation and debate, with each new sighting reinvigorating interest in the phenomenon. The incident also drew comparisons to various cultural and historical legends of cities in the sky. For example, ancient Chinese folklore includes stories of mirage-like visions of celestial cities, often seen as omens or divine messages. This cultural context added a new layer of mystique to the modern-day sightings and emphasized a long history of other, similar sightings. Despite the numerous theories, the scientific community maintains that the most plausible explanation for the floating city in Foshan is a Fata Morgana illusion. The specific atmospheric conditions required for such a mirage, including temperature inversions and calm, clear air, were present at the time of the sighting. This explanation aligns with the principles of optics and atmospheric science, providing a rational and evidence-based account of the event. Number 9. Pine Hills Lights In May 2013, a Reddit user named 95dumas13 posted a thread on the r slash ghost subreddit titled Unexplained Phenomenon Caught on Camera. The user shared a series of images captured by a security camera set up inside their home in Pine Hills. The photos revealed eerie, unexplained lights that appeared to float in midair, casting a mysterious glow throughout the room. The user described waking up to the strange lights and capturing the images, adding that they had no idea what could have caused the phenomenon, writing, Recently, a bizarre incident was captured on my ring camera in Pine Hills, Orlando, Florida. The footage shows a mysterious ring of light moving around the room, seemingly triggered by the motion detection feature. What makes this even more intriguing is that there were no people present in the building at the time, and no external light sources that could explain this phenomenon. I've verified that the footage is authentic and hasn't been altered. I'm reaching out to the community to see if anyone has encountered something similar or can provide a scientific or spiritual explanation for what I've captured. I'm open to all perspectives and would love to hear your thoughts. Check out the video and let me know what you think. The post quickly gained attention, with many Reddit users flocking to the comments to offer their theories. Some suggested that the lights could be paranormal orbs, often associated with ghostly activity. Others proposed more mundane explanations, such as light reflections or camera malfunctions. Despite the various theories, the true nature of the Pine Hills lights remains a mystery, with no definitive explanation emerging from the discussion. The post and the mystery it presented continues to invite discourse around the potential capture of paranormal phenomena. Number 8. Humboldt Pet Supply Store in the quiet town of Eureka, California, nestled within the scenic Humboldt County, there lies a pet supply store that has become the focal point of an eerie mystery. The Humboldt Pet Supply Store, a place typically filled with the chatter of customers and the playful sounds of pets, gained unexpected attention when a ghostly figure was purportedly caught on its security cameras. This incident, captured in a video that has since intrigued paranormal enthusiasts and skeptics alike, adds a chilling chapter to the store's history. The mysterious event occurred in the early hours of the morning when the store was closed and the aisles were empty of customers. Security footage from the store shows a peculiar occurrence that has left many scratching their heads. At around 11 p.m., as the footage plays, a transparent figure seems to glide across the screen, 
moving with an ethereal quality that suggests it isn't bound by the physical constraints of the living. The video shows shelves and displays undisturbed, with the store in a state of calm. Then, a misty form appears, moving purposefully, yet without the physicality of a human being. This figure moves through the pet supply store, disappearing as quickly as it appeared, leaving behind a sense of unease and wonder. The security footage has sparked a flurry of theories and speculations about the nature of the apparition. Some suggest that the figure is a ghost, possibly the spirit of a former employee or a customer with a deep connection to the store. The way the figure moves, slowly and deliberately, gives credence to the idea that it could be an intelligent haunt, aware of its surroundings and perhaps attempting to communicate. Others believe that the apparition could be the residual energy of a past event, replaying in a loop like a tape recording. This theory suggests that the ghost isn't aware of the living world, but is instead an imprint of past energy, manifesting in the form of a ghostly figure. Skeptics, on the other hand, argue that the footage could have a more mundane explanation. Some suggest it could be a trick of the light, a reflection, or even an insect or dust particle close to the camera lens, giving the illusion of a ghostly figure. Others propose the possibility of video tampering or technical glitches that could create such an effect, with one skeptic even commenting on the original video. If you look closely at the rods at the end of the video, you can see a string attached to it. The package moves when the rod moves clockwise. While the Humboldt Pet Supply Store was widely known for paranormal activity prior to this incident, the broader area of Humboldt County has its share of ghost stories and unexplained phenomena. Eureka, with its rich history dating back to the 19th century, has many old buildings and sites that are rumored to be haunted. The town's historical background provides fertile ground for ghostly legends and unexplained occurrences. Following the release of the video, Humboldt Pet Supply has received increased attention from both the local community and paranormal investigators. The store's owners and employees have expressed mixed feelings, ranging from curiosity to unease, about the possibility of a ghostly presence. Some staff members have reported feeling cold spots or a sense of being watched, although these accounts are anecdotal and not corroborated by additional evidence. The store has also become a point of interest for paranormal investigation teams, eager to explore the site and capture further evidence of the alleged haunting. While no conclusive findings have been reported, the continued interest keeps the story of the humbled pet supply ghost alive. Number 7. Jake Moon 32-year-old Chris Jake Moon, a vibrant Native American mother, was living in Kingman, Arizona, when her life was tragically cut short. Known for her loving nature and devotion to her family, Chris was a mother whose life revolved around her children and her community. Her untimely death left a void that continues to haunt those who knew her, and her case remains one of Arizona's most perplexing cold cases. On the evening of February 13, 1998, Chris was last seen at a local bar in Kingman. She was out for the night, a rare break from her responsibilities as a mother. Unfortunately, Chris never made it back home. Her failure to return prompted immediate concern among her family and friends, leading them to contact the authorities and report her missing. The next morning, a father and daughter made a gruesome discovery in a remote desert area outside of Kingman. They found Chris's lifeless body, which had been brutally beaten and abandoned. The remote location of her body added a layer of complexity to the investigation, raising questions about how and why she ended up there. The Mojave County Sheriff's Office launched an extensive investigation, but the case quickly grew cold due to a lack of concrete leads and evidence. The brutality of the crime and the isolated location where Chris was found suggested a deliberate and calculated act. But without witnesses or clear forensic evidence, the investigation stalled. Despite numerous appeals to the public for information and the passage of time, no significant breakthroughs have ever been made. One prevalent theory suggests that Chris Jake Moon may have been the victim of a random act of violence. Given the remote location where her body was found, some speculate that she may have encountered individuals engaged in illegal activities, such as drug trafficking or other criminal enterprises who perceived Chris as a threat 
or an unwanted witness. This theory is bolstered by the fact that Kingman, while generally safe, is not immune to the sporadic presence of criminal elements due to its proximity to major highways and remote desert areas. Another theory posits that Chris was targeted by someone she knew. Investigators have explored the possibility that Chris had an altercation or unresolved conflict with an acquaintance or someone from the local community. This theory is supported by the seemingly personal nature of the attack. Chris was brutally beaten, suggesting a degree of anger or passion. The challenge with this theory is the absence of any clear suspects or motives that have come to light, despite extensive questioning of Chris's friends, family, and acquaintances. The CCTV footage from the convenience store Chris visited that night has also led some to theorize that Chris was followed after leaving the store. The footage shows Chris looking relaxed, but what is unseen is potentially more telling. Some believe that someone could have been watching her and waited for the right moment to strike. The lack of additional footage or eyewitnesses, however, makes it difficult to confirm if anyone was tailing her. One intriguing, albeit less substantiated, theory involves the possibility of a serial offender. Over the years, certain similarities have been noted between Chris's murder and other unsolved cases in the region, leading some to wonder if a serial perpetrator could be at work. This theory has gained some traction due to the brutal nature of the attack and the calculated disposal of Chris's body in a remote location. However, without a clear pattern or direct evidence linking the cases, this remains speculative. Despite the various theories, each comes with significant gaps and unanswered questions. The randomness of the violence, the potential involvement of known individuals, and the possibility of premeditated stalking all remain on the table as viable leads. Advances in forensic technology and renewed public interest have rekindled hope that new leads might emerge, bringing the possibility of a breakthrough closer. In recent years, Chris Jake Moon's case has gained renewed attention as one of Arizona's coldest cases. The Mojave County Sheriff's Office has continued to seek public assistance, urging anyone with information to come forward. In 2022, the case was highlighted again in the media, bringing it back to the public eye and rekindling hope that new leads might emerge. Chris's family has never given up on seeking justice. They have continuously appealed to the public, sharing memories of Chris and their ongoing pain and loss. The case remains open, and the Sheriff's Office has reiterated its commitment to solving it. Advances in forensic technology and renewed public interest provide a glimmer of hope that one day, the perpetrator will be brought to justice. Number 6. The Witch of Delray Recently, a video surfaced on YouTube purportedly capturing the ghostly image of the Witch of Delray. The footage, captured by someone known only as Ted, claiming to be a now-retired police officer, shows a spectral figure moving across the screen, hauntingly similar to a face that has long since terrified the old Delray neighborhood. The eerie apparition, resembling an old woman with long flowing hair and tattered clothing, has reignited local interest in the century-old story of the legend of the Witch of Delray. The real Witch of Delray was Rose Veres, a Hungarian immigrant who lived in the Delray neighborhood during the early 1900s. Rose was a widowed mother who ran a boarding house with her son, Bill. Known for her strange behavior and reclusive lifestyle, Rose quickly became the subject of neighborhood gossip. Her peculiar habits, combined with the mysterious deaths of several of her boarders, led to her being labeled a witch by the local community. In 1931, Rose Varis was arrested and charged with the murder of a boarder named Stephen Mack. The circumstances surrounding Mack's death were suspicious. He was found dead from unknown causes, leading to rumors that Rose had used poison or witchcraft to kill him. The press quickly dubbed her the Witch of Delray, sensationalizing the case and playing into the superstitions and fears of the time. Rose Varis' trial was a media spectacle, filled with sensational headlines and dubious testimony. Many witnesses claimed that Rose had cursed them or used her supposed supernatural powers to cause harm. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, Rose was convicted of murder, largely due to the testimony of her son Bill, who claimed his mother had confessed to the crime. However, it later emerged that Bill had been coerced into testifying against his mother by the police, who used threats and intimidation to secure his statement. 
Rose Varis was sentenced to life in prison, where she maintained her innocence. Her conviction was seen by many as a miscarriage of justice, influenced more by the hysteria and prejudice against immigrants of the time than by any real evidence of wrongdoing. She spent nearly 14 years in prison before a new investigation, spurred by advocates who believed in her innocence, led to her release in 1945. The legend of the Witch of Delray is steeped in various theories and speculations. Some believe that Rose Varus was indeed a witch who used dark magic to harm those around her. This belief is bolstered by the supposed mysterious deaths that occurred in her boarding house and her odd behavior, which some interpreted as signs of her use of witchcraft. Others argue that Rose was a victim of the era's rampant xenophobia and sexism. As an immigrant woman running a boarding house alone, she was an easy target for suspicion and prejudice. Her eccentricities and the unfortunate deaths of her boarders were likely amplified by a community looking for someone to blame for their misfortunes. Modern investigations into the case of Rose Veras have largely debunked the notion that she was a witch. Historians and legal experts have pointed out the numerous flaws in her trial, including coerced testimony, lack of evidence, and the influence of sensationalist media. Books such as The Witch of Delray, Rose Veras and Detroit's infamous 1930s murder mystery by Karen Dibus have shed light on the real story behind the myth, portraying Rose as a tragic figure caught in a web of fear and superstition, stymied by her limited understanding of the legal system. The story of the Witch of Delray is a powerful reminder of how fear and prejudice can lead to grave injustices. Rose Veras's life was irrevocably changed by the accusations and the resulting hysteria and her story serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of scapegoating and the importance of due process. The recent footage, while eerie and mysterious, is likely a testament to the enduring power of her legend rather than evidence of the supernatural. As history continues to unravel the true story of Rose Veras, the Witch of Delray remains a fascinating and tragic part of Detroit's lore. Number 5 the dimming star. In the vast expanse of space, the mysterious dimming of the star Betelgeuse has captivated astronomers and amateur stargazers alike. This red supergiant, located approximately 700 light years away in the constellation Orion, is one of the brightest stars visible from Earth. However, beginning in late 2019, Betelgeuse experienced an unprecedented and dramatic dimming event where its brightness dropped by more than 60%. This phenomenon, known as the Great Dimming, sparked widespread curiosity and concern, leading to various observations and analyses to determine its cause. Betelgeuse's dimming was first noted by amateur astronomers, but soon, professional observatories around the world began to closely monitor the star. The European Southern Observatory, ESO, captured detailed images that revealed significant changes in Betelgeuse's photosphere, or the visible surface of the star. These observations showed irregularities and darker regions that suggested something unusual was happening. An accepted explanation for Betelgeuse's dimming involves a combination of two key factors, a massive ejection of material from the star and the formation of a cold spot on its surface. Observable in mid-2019, Betelgeuse expelled a large amount of gas, which subsequently cooled and condensed into dust. This dust cloud partially obscured the star, leading to the observed decrease in brightness. Concurrently, a temporary cooler region formed on the star's photosphere, further contributing to the dimming. This dual explanation, involving both dust and surface temperature changes, has been widely accepted by the scientific community. Despite this consensus, the extraordinary nature of the event has led to a plethora of alternative theories and speculations. One of the most popular theories is that Betelgeuse's dimming was a precursor to its imminent explosion as a supernova. As a red supergiant nearing the end of its life cycle, Betelgeuse is expected to eventually undergo a supernova explosion, an event that would be spectacularly visible from Earth. While this theory generated significant excitement, Astronomers have concluded that the star is not yet at the critical stage for such an explosion, likely having tens of thousands of years left before it reaches that point. 
Another intriguing theory is that the dimming could be due to complex, pulsation-related phenomena within the star. Betelgeuse is known to exhibit periodic pulsations, where its outer layers expand and contract over time. Some researchers have suggested that an unusually strong pulsation cycle could have caused the significant dimming observed in 2019 to 2020. This would imply that the star's internal dynamics are more complex than previously understood. There are also more speculative theories that delve into the realm of astrophysical anomalies and unknown stellar processes. Some scientists have considered the possibility that Betelgeuse's dimming could be influenced by gravitational lensing effects where the light from a star is bent or blocked by an unseen massive object between Betelgeuse and Earth. While this theory is less likely given current evidence, it highlights the potential for unexpected factors in cosmic observations. Additionally, discussions have included the potential impact of large-scale magnetic field changes within Betelgeuse. Changes in magnetic activity could alter the star's surface properties and contribute to variability in brightness. This theory is still under investigation, as understanding magnetic field dynamics in red supergiants remains an evolving area of study. Number 4. The Turkish Guardian Angel In the bustling city of Adana, Turkey, a routine evening for one shopkeeper quickly turned into a moment of incredible mystery and potential tragedy. As the shopkeeper, known as Sardar, was diligently bringing in his store's produce and other items from the sidewalk. A series of events unfolded that would leave many questioning what exactly had transpired. The shopkeeper, unaware of any imminent danger, was saved by a mysterious stranger. This unexplained incident, captured on video, has become a topic of fascination and speculation. The footage begins with the shopkeeper tidying up outside his store, completely oblivious to the peril approaching him. Suddenly, a man appears and taps him on the shoulder. This simple gesture prompted the shopkeeper to turn around just as a large truck swerved into view. Interestingly, the stranger who tapped the shopkeeper on the shoulder didn't look back or acknowledge the oncoming truck. He seemed to walk away nonchalantly, not even breaking his stride, with his back turned to the vehicle as it turned onto the street. This raises the question, how did he know about the danger without seeming to observe it? After the incident, the shopkeeper looked around to thank his unexpected savior, but the man had mysteriously vanished. This disappearance added another layer of intrigue to the already perplexing event. How did this stranger predict the accident, and why did he disappear so quickly? Several theories have emerged to explain this event. Some believe the stranger could have been a guardian angel or a supernatural being sent to protect the shopkeeper. This theory aligns with a belief in unseen protectors who intervene in moments of great danger. The timing and the stranger's seeming disappearance suggest a presence beyond ordinary human capabilities. Another theory suggests that the man might have been a time traveler who knew what was about to happen. This idea, though far-fetched, has captivated the imaginations of those who think the precise timing and foreknowledge displayed in the incident point to someone with the ability to see future events. A more grounded explanation is that the stranger might have been an exceptionally observant individual who noticed the danger before the shopkeeper did. Perhaps he saw the truck's trajectory or heard it approaching and acted quickly to avert disaster. His swift departure could simply be a case of humility or desire to avoid attention. The footage quickly went viral, with many dubbing the mysterious stranger a guardian angel. The video, which can be seen here, captures the surreal and almost otherworldly nature of the event, leaving viewers to ponder the identity and intentions of the figure. One of the most popular supernatural theories is that the stranger was an angel or some form of divine being sent to protect the shopkeeper. Despite the various theories, the mystery remains unsolved. The shopkeeper, grateful yet bewildered, continues to recount the tale hoping one day to understand what really happened. Was it a setup, a fake, or something beyond our understanding? Local authorities and residents have been unable to identify the mysterious man, and no one has come forward to claim responsibility for the life-saving act. This has only fueled further speculation and curiosity. Sardar Benesaya, 
the man whose life was saved, has expressed his deep gratitude and amazement at the incident. He acknowledges that without the stranger's intervention, the outcome could have been catastrophic. His story has inspired many to believe in the presence of unseen protectors and the idea that sometimes life presents us with unexplainable miracles. Number 3. The Brown Lady of Raynham Hall The legend of the Brown Lady of Raynham Hall is one of the most enduring and famous ghost stories in England. Sightings of this spectral figure, believed to be the ghost of Lady Dorothy Walpole, have been reported by numerous visitors to the Grand Estate in Norfolk, and her presence has been the subject of much fascination and speculation over the years. The Brown Lady is named so due to the brown brocade dress she's said to wear, and her appearance is a haunting reminder of her tragic and untimely demise. The most famous sighting of the Brown Lady occurred on September 19, 1936, when photographers from Country Life magazine, Captain Hubert C. Proven, and his assistant, Ender Shira, visited Raynham Hall to photograph its grand interior. While setting up a shot of the grand staircase, Shira saw a misty form descending the stairs and urged Proven to quickly take a picture. The resulting photograph, which captured a ghostly figure in a flowing gown, is one of the most compelling pieces of paranormal evidence ever recorded. The image was published in Country Life magazine and later in Life magazine, sparking widespread interest and debate. According to local lore and historical accounts, Lady Dorothy Walpole was the sister of Sir Robert Walpole, considered the first Prime Minister of Britain. She married Charles Townsend, the second Viscount Townsend, who was known for his temper. It is believed that Lady Dorothy was imprisoned in her own home at Raynham Hall by her jealous husband after he discovered her infidelity. She reportedly died under mysterious circumstances in 1726, and her restless spirit has been said to haunt the hall ever since. Over the years, numerous guests and residents of Raynham Hall have reported seeing the Brown Lady. One of the most notable accounts comes from King George IV, who claimed to have seen her while staying in the hall in the early 19th century. He described a figure in a brown dress standing beside his bed, her face pale and eyes hollow. This sighting, along with many others, has cemented the Brown Lady's reputation as one of England's most famous ghosts. The legend of the Brown Lady of Raynham Hall has inspired numerous theories over the years, each attempting to explain the mysterious sightings and the famous photograph. One of the most popular theories is that the Brown Lady is indeed the ghost of Lady Dorothy Walpole. According to this theory, her imprisonment and untimely death left her spirit restless causing her to haunt the halls of her former home. Proponents of this theory point to the numerous eyewitness accounts, including those from famed and reputable sources like King George IV, as evidence of her ghostly presence. They believe that Lady Dorothy's spirit is unable to find peace due to the unjust imprisonment and suffering she endured at the hands of her jealous husband, Charles Townsend. Another theory posits that the Brown Lady sightings are a result of psychological phenomena, such as mass hysteria or the power of suggestion. According to this view, the legend of the Brown Lady has become so deeply ingrained in the local folklore and collective consciousness that visitors to Raynham Hall are primed to see her. This theory suggests that people who are aware of the ghost story may subconsciously interpret ordinary shadows or reflections as ghostly apparitions leading to a self-fulfilling prophecy. This perspective is supported by the fact that many of the sightings occur in the same areas of the hall, such as the Grand Staircase, where the famous photograph was taken. Skeptics have also proposed more mundane explanations for the Brown Lady sightings and the 1936 photograph. One common theory is that the photograph is a clever hoax created using double exposure or other photographic techniques available at the time. Critics argue that the misty figure in the photograph could be the result of a deliberate manipulation by the photographers to create a sensational story. While no definitive evidence has been presented to debunk the photograph, the possibility of a hoax remains a plausible explanation for those who are skeptical of supernatural phenomena. In addition to these theories, 
Some paranormal investigators suggest that the brown lady could be an example of a residual haunting. According to this theory, certain traumatic or emotionally charged events can leave an imprint on the environment, causing a recording of the past to play back under certain conditions. In the case of the brown lady, this would mean that the sightings are not of an active sentient spirit, but rather a recurring visual echo of Lady Dorothy's presence. This theory could explain why the brown lady is often seen in specific locations and why her apparition seems to follow a consistent pattern. In recent years, Raynham Hall has become a popular destination for ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts, hoping to catch a glimpse of the elusive brown lady. The hall's current caretakers have embraced its haunted reputation, often sharing stories and historical details with curious visitors. While the true nature of the brown lady remains a mystery, her story continues to captivate and intrigue those who hear it. Number 2. The Figure in the Basement In March 2013, a Reddit user named CharacterWar2442 posted a chilling thread on the r slash paranormal subreddit, titled Unknown Figure Caught on Camera. The post featured a photo showing a mysterious, shadowy figure standing near a staircase in their home. The eerie image was captured by a security camera that had been installed to monitor the house, and the figure appeared human-like, but dark and indistinct, adding a sense of mystery and unease. Character War 2442 provided some background around the circumstances in the home, before explaining the photograph. They recounted how, as teenagers, they and their younger brother had lived in their parents' basement. At the ages of 17 and 14, they began experiencing what seemed to be paranormal activity. Both siblings had separate rooms in the basement, but each experienced closet doors opening and closing on their own, which they initially attributed to their cat. They also heard what sounded like footsteps in the pitch black room at night, which they dismissed as the cat's movements. The younger brother occasionally woke up to the sensation of someone or something sitting on the edge of his bed. Despite these unsettling occurrences, their parents dismissed their claims. Years later, after both siblings had moved out, their parents began experiencing similar activity in the basement. Items moved from place to place, occasional knocking was heard without a source, and doors were slammed shut. The parents shared these experiences with the siblings only after a particularly chilling incident. The security camera in the family room, installed by Character War 2442's stepdad, alerted him to movement one evening. The camera allowed him to view the footage and take screenshots, though saving the video required a subscription he did not have. Upon reviewing the footage, he saw a figure moving from left to right across the family room, toward the garage. The incident occurred around 9 p.m. when the stepdad was working in the garage, the mom was upstairs, and the younger brothers were in their rooms. The figure captured did not resemble any of the family members, and given the figure's height and appearance, it was unlikely to be one of the children. Character War 2442's mother called them in a state of panic after seeing the screenshot, recounting all the strange activities they had been experiencing. The figure in the photograph was clear and distinct, and its movements seemed deliberate. Character War 2442's initial reaction was one of vindication, as they had long insisted something strange was happening in the house. In their Reddit post, Character War 2442 sought explanations from the community. They explained that many of the people they had shown the photo to asked if it could be one of the brothers, but upon closer inspection, it was clear that the figure did not match the appearance of either sibling. The figure seemed too tall and too mature to be one of the younger brothers, who had no reason to lie about walking across the living room that evening. The comments on the post quickly filled with theories and speculation. Some suggested that the figure could be a ghost or spirit, given the history of unexplained activity in the house. Others proposed more rational explanations, such as light reflections, shadows, or a camera glitch. Despite the varied suggestions, the true nature of the figure remains a mystery, and the eerie photograph continues to captivate and puzzle the online community. Whether the figure was a ghostly apparition, a trick of the light, or something else entirely, we may never know.
Number 1. The Ghost of Room 209 The Ghost of Room 209 is a widely discussed paranormal event allegedly captured on hotel security footage at the Wingate by Wyndham Hotel in Illinois. This incident, which gained significant attention on platforms like Reddit and other social media sites, has spurred a variety of theories and debates about its authenticity and what exactly was captured on that particular night. The incident reportedly occurred on September 14, 2003, at the Wingate Hotel. According to the story, a hotel guest called the front desk complaining about loud screams coming from room 209. The room was supposed to be vacant at the time, which immediately raised concerns. The hotel manager, accompanied by a security guard, went to investigate the disturbance. The security footage shows the manager standing outside room 209 with audible screams and other disturbing noises emanating from within. The video also captures the moment when the manager opens the door to room 209. At that instant, a white, translucent figure appears to emerge from the room and move down the hallway, quickly disappearing from the camera's view. Many believe that the footage is genuine evidence of a haunting. The screams, combined with the ghostly apparition, suggest to some that room 209 is the home of a restless spirit. The immediate response from the staff, who seemed genuinely startled and confused on the video, adds to the credibility of this theory. Paranormal enthusiasts point to the consistency of the phenomenon with other reports of hauntings, which often involve disembodied voices and unexplained visual anomalies, among other manifestations. Skeptics argue that the video could be a hoax or an elaborate prank. They suggest that the figure seen in the footage might be an actor or a cleverly edited special effect. The motivations for crafting such a hoax could range from a desire for viral fame to a marketing stunt intended to draw attention to the hotel. Critics of the paranormal explanation often highlight the lack of verifiable details about the staff involved and the unknown circumstances under which the video was released. Another theory proposes that the eerie events in the footage could be the result of a technical malfunction or video artifact. This perspective suggests that the sounds and the apparition could be anomalies created by faulty equipment or interference. Proponents of this theory argue that the coincidental nature of the noises and visual phenomena can sometimes be explained by more mundane technical issues. Some theories delve into psychological explanations suggesting that the power of suggestion could play a role in what we believe we see. The guests and staff, primed by a belief in ghosts or the reputation of Room 209, might interpret ordinary noises and shadows as supernatural events. This theory emphasizes how human perception and belief systems can influence our interpretation of ambiguous stimuli. Following the incident, there were various attempts to debunk or verify the footage, the video has sparked numerous discussions online, particularly on platforms like Reddit. Users have dissected the video frame by frame, offering both skeptical and supportive analyses. One significant point of discussion is the lack of additional context or follow-up from the hotel. While the video itself is compelling, the absence of detailed reports or corroborative evidence leaves room for doubt. No official statements from the hotel or documented investigations have been released, which adds to the mystery. The hotel staff members depicted in the video have not come forward to share their experiences. The Ghost of Room 209 remains one of the most intriguing pieces of purported paranormal evidence. Theories range from genuine ghostly activity to elaborate hoax, technical glitch, or psychological phenomenon. The video continues to puzzle viewers, leaving the true nature of the incident open to interpretation. Whether it serves as proof of the supernatural or simply a curious unexplained event, the ghost of Room 209 has secured its place in the Hall of Fame of Internet Mysteries.